What I wanted to do was work on airplanes for basically my whole life. In my freshman year of college, I got a, an interesting internship where I was working on actually robotic fish, but it had some application to uh, airplane design. I got to be working on robotic fish and programming them and thought it was going to be great and it was interesting, but it was kind of the final time where I realized that wasn't exactly the path I wanted to go down. So shortly after that, um, actually a NASA test pilot who was a Super Hornet pilot um, and then ended up being the shuttle astronaut, uh, came to our school and basically talked about his career and he ended up doing a graduate or a graduate degree at University of Washington. So that was sort of the day where I changed paths on my life and no kidding, signed up for Air Force the next week. I knew I wanted to work on airplanes, but I didn't know is I wanted to fly them. From there, graduated, and then uh, so you start off with a couple years of pilot training. Did that at Wichita Falls, Texas, Shepard Air Force Base. And then my dream the whole time going through there was to go fly this thing. It's pretty cool. Um, this is the only Air Force Base I've been stationed where you can actually, like, you know, go out, do a test point supersonic, and then come home and then have your wife complain about how the dog's been scared all day because you sonic boom the, the base. <laughs> that was awesome. Take a lot of pride in the quality of the sonic booms we do. Um, it's always a competition, but uh, it's pretty cool to be able to do that and then hear the bros out there uh, booming the base when they're getting test data done. The sonic booms you heard and Maybe many of you felt, they're pretty common here, but the ones that you felt that began our ceremony today were sadly created by the last aircraft ever to fly in the high altitude supersonic corridor. Never again will aircraft fly in the high altitude supersonic corridor that goes over this installation. But the high altitude supersonic corridor is officially dead. When I grew up, there's nothing cooler than Fighter, fighter jet or a rocket, so it made sense for me to study hard for math, science, and all that to try and eventually work on these. Got lucky that I got to fly them also. Today, we renamed that chunk of airspace, that critical piece of our infrastructure in the test and training environment in honor and in memory of the team, the team of Big A Airmen, whose collective individual contributions coalesced into something much more powerful than they could have ever imagined. We're using the supersonic corridors every week to go out and do envelope expansion missions. We've got a bunch of new hardware we're putting on the F-22. Um, this jet is our air dominance fighter that we're gonna be using for the next decade. I think we need to get the word out there and make sure people know that it's awesome to work on this stuff. And uh, we haven't figured it all out. There's still a lot more uh, we need to figure out for hypersonics. In their honor and their memory, we officially christen that high altitude supersonic corridor, the Bell X-1 supersonic corridor. When I request, instead of the high altitude supersonic corridor, we'll request the Bell X-1 corridor, and uh, I think that'll be cool to say on the radio. There's a lot of work left to do, so uh, hopefully we can inspire the next generation to study hard and build the next thing.